Today on episode 39, our Roberto Hernandez episode of Typical Chicago Fans, presented by The Loop Sports, we have Sinkers and Floaters, an NBA and NHL Finals recap, an NBA free agency preview, Diamond Talk on the Cubs and Sox, and Typical Chicago Trivia. Let's roll. One of the sponsors of today's podcast is 26shirts.com Chicago. We're excited to partner with 26 Shirts again for the month of June. 26 Shirts sells cool t-shirts backed by an even cooler mission, helping people in need. Every two weeks, they offer an exclusive t-shirt for $25, and a portion of the proceeds from each sale goes to help a person or family in need or an organization heavily involved in community outreach. The artists who provide the designs receive a percentage, a life is impact, impacted, and you get a limited edition sports-themed t-shirt that will go in the 26 Shirts vault, never to be printed again. Portions of the proceeds from the sales of these shirts go to help a person in need of serious financial assistance due to overwhelming medical bills. You can read more about this particular cause on the website. Thank you to 26 Shirts for sponsoring the podcast for the month of June. Go to 26shirts.com to order your shirt and help a worthy cause. They have a new shirt out now. It's the Red Hot Biscuit. Um, it's a bear, a Chicago, and it says Biscuit at the bottom. I think that might be the is that the name of the of the mascot. Not really sure. That I'm not uh, sure. But go out. You have until June 23rd to go out and get this hot, hot shirt. Also, mystery shirts on sale. Um, and also go out and get your flag. Hello and welcome to episode 39 of Typical Chicago Fans, presented by The Loop Sports. I am Zach Lillian. You can see right here if you're watching us on our YouTube page above me. And if you're not, you're just like, what the hell is he talking about? <laughs> uh, my Twitter is at Zillia, L-I-L-J-A, uh, T-C-F. Uh, you can follow the main page at Typical underscore Chicago. Follow The Loop Sports at The Loop underscore Sports. Uh, Facebook, we do a weekday show, which we are going to keep to a weekday show here um, during the summer. Uh, we're going to do that between Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, we'll be doing that about 8 o'clock at night. That's on Typical Chicago Fans Facebook. You go to Loop Sports, usually sharing that for us. And we got our blogs on there on their Facebook uh, that have all of our links to our podcast. So go check out the Loop Sports on Facebook. Instagram. Um, Instagram, next week we will be doing a cool little thing. We do a little pre-podcast uh, ping pong for the people who aren't on Instagram and see our stories every week. So we're going to be doing a little fun thing with that where we're going to be going Instagram live for uh, hopefully I get back to yeah, 500. And uh, also you go to Loop Sports. I'll be Sports. all week. Yeah, you go to Loop Sports on Instagram. Yeah, you'll probably be down here uh, making your wife help you yes. uh, try and beat me because it was a close one this week. It was week, a good one. Very we good will one. be going for hopefully z is going to be back to 500. That'll be on probably our not. Instagram, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Instagram, Facebook Live, Instagram Live. It's Boomy over here. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at BoomyTCF. If you're an Apple user, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, subscribe, rate, and review there. If not, we're on Spotify. Make sure to follow us there. And head on over to the YouTube page. We're working on some new content there, and we're uploading, as we've talked about, this is probably the third time I think we've done this. Yeah. We're videotaping all of our – I say videotaping like it's 1992 and someone's got a big camcorder. Maybe it is. Maybe. Uh, but we're, we're video recording ourselves uh, as we record these, and we put them up on – on YouTube, so head on over to the YouTube page. Just type in "Typical Chicago Fans" on YouTube and subscribe there. We'll keep some content flowing this summer. We got a ton of ideas that we're working on, so make sure you check us out there. Yeah, it's way with us here. Uh, we live out in the boondocks, yeah. so the uh, Wi-Fi is not the best. So it's kind of tough to put up uh, YouTube videos. It quickly, takes so roughly it's... about an hour to an hour and a half to upload one YouTube, or video. sometimes twelve hours. Yeah, for exactly. some, It seems like I don't know what is the deal, but uh, yeah, uh, just. Wait with us. We're going to be getting some cool stuff out. We got some cool stuff coming at you. Well, Zach, I said that today is our Roberto Hernandez episode. Do you have any idea who Roberto Hernandez is? A pitcher for the White Sox. Pitcher for the White Sox. Uh, any idea on the decade? Um, 19. 19- 80s? You're close. 91, he broke in with the White Sox. I'm closer than I was for the other guy. You were very like 40 yeah, years off on that yeah. one. Uh, but Roberto Hernandez, a name that I vaguely remembered, um, but not you know super. Obviously, he played in 91. I was born in 90, so I didn't really was familiar. But did you know that he pitched till he was 40? Two years old. His last year was 2007. That's really not that crazy if you think about it, because now some guys are going to 45 nowadays. But yeah, yeah you're right though. Back in the day, uh, when they used to just—I mean, that was still not back in the day. It was 90s, but they threw you till your arm fell off. And, I exactly. Mean, going to 42 is pretty impressive. Must have made 
I don't know. How much were those guys making back in the um, day? It can't that, be that much. Well, in his final year in 2007, he made $3.3 3 million. Oh, that's uh, nice but when he little... broke in in 91, he made $100,000. Yeah, back then, though. He, yeah. But, but at one uh, point in uh, 1999, when he was pitching for uh, the Devil Rays, uh, he made $6.1 million. So he was he was obviously pretty good. Man, that's uh, some money there. Definitely, definitely. But, but let's get into our sinkers and floaters. Uh, my sinker is the Bears kicking competition. Yeah, uh, what again, the hell is going another on? Another over three uh, from forty-two yards, and then Chris Blewett was waived the same day, yeah. so we don't have to worry about having Chris Blewett out Can there. Can we move past the forty-two yard BS? That's the thing. Like, come um, on, that's why, why I keep beating a dead horse. That's why it's my sinker. I'm a little tired of going back to that, putting guys in the same situation, uh, and I know they're not. I don't know how the situation goes during practice. Maybe if you hit the field goal, you don't have to run gas or something like that. I don't understand why you keep going back to the same spot that is so such a touchy situation yeah. for so many Bears fans. And it, and it well, keeps the pressure backfiring on those on you. guys. Those guys know what the what, what the significance of it is. Like they own televisions, they are on the internet. Those kickers know why do we got to keep doing this? And uh, I also have we, a I little say bit, we like I'm a Bears fan. I have a, a video that I'm going to send to the Bears. I'm going to cut this up. Sign. Pat yes. McAfee. That man is out there. He's hitting 60 yarders. He, he had a 65 a, yarder the other day. And it, oh my gosh. And just also the other aspect of what he would bring yes. to a team. He would be the most popular kicker in the league. I 100%. love the way Pat McAfee, I mean, just the way he uh, does his social media, mm -hmm. he holds himself. And it's just an awesome, uh, it'd be awesome situation for the Bears because. It would also just put this to bed. I'm tired. Absolutely. I'm tired of the whole situation. And he's out there proving that he he can uh, he can kick some field goals. He can yes. kick some balls, and it would be nice. We could also maybe have him punt too. Yeah, and he's a hell of a guy too. Like he he always does the charity stuff. Like and you talked about, he's got his podcast and all his you know, social media empire. Like he could be a face that the Bears can use out in the community and and, and put to good use. So move yeah, on from the 42 yard Pat nonsense, McAfee. Right now. I actually, as a Packers fan, I still support that because I love my guy, Pat McAfee. My sinker cool is sandals and flip-flops. Um, I know it seems to be sandals and flip-flops type of year. I'm wearing mine right now. I'm a big sandals guy. Uh, a sandal. But a Greenwich, Connecticut has banned municipal employees from wearing sandals and flip-flops to work. Um, Why is that? I, I, they said uh, there was uh, this was a response to a specific incident to create safer conditions and avoid accidents that can result in injuries, absences, and workers' compensation. So you know what happened was some idiot, and I don't know about you how often you wear sandals, I trip over the front of mine more often than I care yeah. to admit. So some idiot was wearing flip-flops and fell down and had to file workman's comp. So now they're taking it away from everybody. So way to go, uh, Greenwich, Connecticut. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right. But it's a sad day for sandals and flip-flops. You got to know when and when not yes. to wear sandals and flip-flops, especially with no socks. Yeah, You got to know. You're going to blow a toe. Like, oh, you're gonna you're gonna do something bad. Why would you even put yourself in that situation? That seems like a definitely a, a you problem. Yeah, exactly. So, you shouldn't be allowed to get workman's comp. If no, I mean that sounds like a, that should be something that you are not allowed to get that for. And but you also shouldn't be able to ruin it for everyone exactly. else that has a brain and knows to wear just shoes. Exactly. Wear regular shoes, people. My floater is prehistoric Siberian wolves. Uh, pretty cool huh? story. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Russian scientists have found the furry head of an Ice Age wolf perfectly preserved in the Siberian permafrost. The they fuck? believe this thing is 40,000 years old. Perfectly. I mean, I'll show you the picture if you want, but this thing looks like a dog. I mean, really? this is really cool. And you know me, big social studies. I teach social studies. I love history and all this stuff. But this, I don't, I'm also might be getting, you know, the horse ahead of the wagon or the wagon ahead of the horse. I don't know which that saying goes. But no um, can we not try and like wake this thing up? Because I saw too many Jurassic Parks to know that this is not going to end well if we try to like clone this thing's DNA. Or yeah, let's just like leave that. it alone. Yeah, they said it's 25% bigger than the wolves today, that this thing was huge. Jeez Louise. Yeah, they don't know if it was a male or female, obviously, because it was only a head. Um, but I love stuff like this. I love when they find like dinosaur bones and skeletons and stuff. So, um, yeah, 40,000-year-old wolf head. Pretty old. Yeah. Pretty old. Uh, that's just crazy. That's thirty five or 38,000 years older than Jesus. Huh. That's kind of wild. That is wild. Um, my floater is Tyson Fury. Also, like you were saying, great name for a yes. boxer, uh, the perfect name for a boxer. 
28 0 and 1. His only one was a draw to uh, um, Deontay Wilder, who is they are set to go at each other in a boxing match. Uh, spring 2020, if they both win their interim bouts to close out this yeah. year. Um, so I think that's going to happen. I don't see why anyone could beat either of those guys. Um, he won last well, night. Wasn't um, Wilder the one that just got beat by Ruiz, the big Mexican guy? No. no oh, no, no. that was. That was. Uh, what was that guy's name? It was not him, though. Oh, okay. That was. Uh, that would have been a huge deal. Yeah. Um, he he. Uh, Fury won last night in a second round TKO. Um, he is six foot nine. He's Jesus. A six foot nine Englishman. And uh, he was singing a little Aerosmith afterwards oh, to his like. good old friend. I like that. I mean, you can do whatever you want after you just did that. Also, well, if, if you're 6'9", you, watch- you can kind of do whatever you want anyway. Yeah, nice. Um, it's kind of fun. The way he was like, it looked like he was in the Matrix last night. Because he was there trying to punch at me. He was like, <laughs> just like going right by his face. You're going to have to cut that video up. Yeah, he went dodging yeah. ghost punches. Three in a row. Three in a row he went That's there. That's impressive. And then he just, I mean, at the end, he was just beating the living shit out of the guy. Was that on DAZN? No, it was on ESPN Plus. Oh, okay. The zone was boxing starting to make a little bit of a comeback with the zone. I think the zone was uh, Bellator. Oh, what, did you that see that? Was, no, Chael Sonnen retired, got his ass kicked really? last night. Yeah, I saw that because um, Jake Glazer was, was doing. Uh, he did the yak with on Barstool, and yep. he was talking about how he was going. It was at Madison Square Garden. It was on the zone. I think is that the one that um, uh, the Ruiz the, fight was on. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, who is the boxer that is with him? Um, well, Triple Alvarez? G. Yeah. Oh yeah, Triple G. No, yeah, Triple, Triple G, G is yeah. like signed. They get. They, they, I don't know what this DAZN has, but they must have a bajillion Well, they of signed him to a um, like $100 million contract. Yeah, it, it was a 10-fight contract over like three and a half years, so he has to fight three fights a year. It's a lot and, of money, though. Yeah, but it, like the money that they're making on DAZN right now is That's what I'm saying, absurd. Though. They, 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 it's, they must be a billion-dollar company right now. Yeah, they're doing well. But, yeah, I thought it was well. kind of cool that it was on the ESPN Plus because I like a little boxing. I didn't get to watch it. It wouldn't allow me on my uh, <laughs> iPad for some reason. But I think I think boxing is an interesting sport, especially when big heavyweights are going at it like that. So I'm looking forward to the Deontay Wilder Tyson Anthony Fury Joshua. Fight. That's yeah. who that was. My um, so yeah, uh, that's going to be a good one in 2020. Um, let's go right into it. We got our guy right here, Fred. Freddie. Um, he is an NBA champion. He is from Rockford. That was very cool. Um, we saw him play in high school. I think two or three times in the state tournament. So. Yeah, so that was a yeah we did. That was a very cool situation that yeah. uh, got to you got to see, he said shout out Rockford on ESPN. Yeah, the first one interviewed after the game by Doris Burke. Uh, Rockford looked like he was having a lot of fun on uh, yes. that night. Um, it was like I see six thousand. That's people what I heard. I don't. Know, out, I wasn't their, confirmed, but they had their own Jurassic Park. Awesome situation. Funny uh, story about where they had that at. I lived in Rockford for a year. And um, they used to have a farmer's, not a farmer's market, but like all the local restaurants would have like on Friday nights, they would set up like tables and stuff and sell food. Well, me, Jess and uh, a buddy of mine had went down there one night. But as you're coming down the street, it's at an incline. Well, and you know me, I don't pay attention the greatest, that whole ADHD kind of thing. Hmm. And well, I missed like a step down uh, off of the street and just Eight shit slammed so hard. Tore, my knee is still like there's a scar from it. There, I, I dripped blood all over. Um, so we had to go like to the first place we saw and get napkins and wipe the blood off my leg. So that was in the same place that they had the Jurassic Great Park. Great memory there. Yeah, exactly. But they, they did their own Jurassic Park in Rockford. Very cool. Um, they ended up winning game six after Clay Thompson went down with a torn ACL. Yeah. Um, along with KD going down the game before uh, with a uh, ruptured Achilles. Mm-hmm. So, that, like I said, we're going to get into it a little bit here after we talk about the finals with the free agency, but that's going to change all of free oh, agency Oh, it changes now. the landscape of it. Um, Kawhi Leonard gets his second finals MVP in that Larry OB trophy. Yeah. Uh, he kept talking about that. I thought that was kind of cool. He was like, yeah, I just wanted to get that Larry OB trophy. <laughs> and uh, uh, and he kind of showed his uh, like a side of Kawhi Look, that you never really side. see. A, yeah, a personal side. A personable side. Yes. Um, that is, like you said, he, he may act like a robot, but I think he's just one of those guys that doesn't want social media. And nowadays, if you're not on social media, you're not on Twitter, Instagram, out there, they're putting your face out there then apparently you're doing nothing yeah like people don't understand that people have lives outside of social media exactly. and that's hard to, to suck because even like i'm not saying anything wrong with what lebron does but he does all over social media yeah. Dwayne wade all those guys all over social media at all times 
And when he doesn't, and even in the off season he doesn't do it. it well, it's it, such it, the norm right now, yeah, right? Like and all if, athletes are on there. And if you're if you're a general manager of a team, you would that that would make me want to give him as much money yes. as he wants because I'm not saying that oh, like you said, LeBron. He's not like in perfect booty stupid. picks. Yeah. yeah, but you could accidentally do something yeah. if you're on there and get yourself in trouble and he's just not even putting himself in harm's way. Exactly. No, and like you said, I mean he stays out of the limelight but still manages to be one of the top five players in the NBA. And, like, I think, like, a lot of younger kids, especially these guys coming into the draft, maybe take notes on that. You know, yeah. like, work in silence and let the product that you put on the floor really speak for itself. And that's – I mean, he's the, the defining case of it because there's so many guys that – I've unfollowed professional athletes on social media because they post too much. And it's just like, dude, I don't care, yeah, you know. Like, there's a fine line, like, even how much you like this person, like, how much do you want to see this person, but then also that person can get called into question, like, are you spending your time posting on social media, or are you spending your time working, and Kawhi Leonard really proved that he's spending that time working when no one sees him out, and I mean, he was just a dog, but... And it also showed that he, him and Kyle Lowry have a relationship that no one understood, Yeah, um, a relationship like... Uh, I guess he texted him and said that I understand you lost your best friend. That yep. uh, I'm kind of coming into a weird situation, but if you trust me, we're gonna go out and we're gonna. I'm guessing he said maybe win that Larry O'B trophy. Yeah. And uh, they he he said Kawhi put his ego to the side, and that's something that n I would say there's not a lot of NBA players would do. Yeah, uh, I couldn't name uh, some of the top NBA players. I, I like I said LeBron. Yeah, I don't even think he could do that because it's just one of those. It's things just such it's, a few and far it, between. Yeah, it, guys don't do that. It, guys don't do that, and he just doesn't care. Right, right, exactly. And um, you know, the, and we kind of talked about this on the Facebook show last night. Was that to me the thing that made him a champion this year? The reason that they had the success they did was I felt that he facilitated the game as good as any top five player possibly yeah. could. I mean, Danny Green gets hot a little bit. He finds him. Fred gets hot at the top, but, you know, probably 10 feet from either way of the top of the key. He's finding him in those situations. Kyle Lowry, same thing. He's he's penetrating and he's getting dump offs for easy buckets to guys like Marc Gasol and Serge Ibaka and finding Siakam and setting screens and playing defense. Like, he did exactly what a leader is supposed to do and he allowed his teammates to flourish in the roles that they succeed in and that's why they handled this this series so easily yeah because even the best like you said with lebron he reads what people say i don't think Kawhi leonard no. goes out there and looks for anything i don't even think he cares i think he's definitely an outlier i feel and like I most think, professional yeah, athletes I, do. that's what i'm saying like you said even the best in the business are yeah. gonna go out and see what's going on and i also think that could stem to the court because you have nothing in your head that you got media telling you that you need to shoot more, pass yeah. more. He has something that in his head. He just goes out and plays and does what he wants to do. Exactly, man. It was it was fun to watch. It really was. Because I even said I think it could go seven because of the Raptors, the way they were playing. But I'll be honest, I had the Warriors anyway. But what do you think as far as all the people saying, well, this needs an asterisk because no. Kevin Durant didn't because play. Because if you look back at the 2015 NBA championship, I think it was, or I think it was 2015, Kevin Love goes down. Yeah. Kyrie goes down. I mean, it, things happen. You're going to win championships, and it, when you, it doesn't matter who you go out there Next and play. Man up. I understand. Yes, maybe they would have maybe won Game Six if Clay doesn't go down, or they win and go to Game Seven and win Game Seven if Kevin Durant doesn't go down. But that's how the game yeah. goes. It's just I think a, that's the biggest cop out BS. Excuse. Yeah, and you can't put an asterisk on. Any yeah, professional championship. You won the championship against the team that was out there. They're professional athletes. Not saying that, yeah, you would love not to lose a Clay Thompson or a KD. Yeah. But you can't go back and be like, well, if we had them, we're probably going to win the NBA championship. Who knows? Right. The Raptors went to Oracle. I don't care if KD's not there or Clay's not there. They won three, three games, games in, in Oakland. A, in a spot that teams have probably won maybe three games the last freaking two years yeah, in, the, that. in the playoffs. So uh, I think that's impressive in itself, and I think that just takes away from a championship from a well-deserved team. Exactly. No, I agree. But not, it, I'm not even going to say that the Raptors are a better team than the Warriors. They had a better series. They had a better series. Yep. Yeah, like I said, um, I also, I'm going to throw this stat here. Uh, I don't know if you listen to PMT at all, but they always joke about Fred after the baby. Um, oh, Fred, yeah. before he had his child, which would have been uh, May 20th, he had 15 games in, and I said he had four points a game, 26% field goal percentage, 20% from three point. Um, and like I said, zero, it's just zero chip tooth. Um, <laughs> after his kid, nine games, 14.7 points per game, 51 field goal percentage, uh, percentage, um, three pointer, 
percent, three point percent. I'm just butchering these stats. Fifty three uh, from three point percentage and nine games, one chip tooth. So <laughs> I think that's some kind of cool. Um, he had his son, yeah, ju- uh, born. Fred Van Fleet Jr. Nice. was born I love the junior. May twentieth. So that's very cool there. Uh, I didn't really notice that because like I said he kind of kept it off of social yeah, media he because did. he, he was did going do a good job of that. playoffs. But um, yeah, very cool situation for Fred. Uh, also a primetime player. I played a few years for primetime and not for the level that he was playing at for sure. Because you were like in the like if it's well, professional still, soccer, you were in like the bottom league. Well, no, he was just older than me, and his yeah, team was yeah, just going right. farther. But I don't. AAU is so confusing. Oh, you know, there's is. so many different teams inside EYBL of systems and, and all that stuff. There's like two different seven teams, and if they have enough. Players, Players and there's 16. Yeah, it's just something that uh, I always think is very fascinating. It you is. got you're into the AAU coaching. Yep. Um, you go to AAU uh, tournaments and then you see everything. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a crazy. You situation. see everything from like seven year old kids to like D1 athletes. Yeah, and it's crazy. Like I watched Jordan McCabe in the same the kid that the white kid that plays at West Virginia. You know the kind of they call him White Chocolate 2.0. Yeah. Saw him in the same gym that I saw eight year old girls playing. I in. think AAU is a very cool situation for everyone because it takes you to situations that you feel like for me i went to aau and it's just different than from when you're going to play at pawpaw yeah and it's just, exactly it's, just, it's really eye-opening and it's good for i think a little like a little bit of life you need to go out there and experience play a little, yeah experience it's Definitely. fun i think aau is a, a system that needs to be more more kids need to go play it yeah and i know I it's hard to get on teams but if there's more kids and it is be but more, it's not because yeah there's, there's so many different teams out there there's local yeah. teams and if you got enough kids um, you can go out there and play. So well, and uh, that was TCF takes on AAU. Yeah. Um, well, that's what I'm saying. We maybe we should TCF AAU team. I, I love it. We could get I ourselves. I love it. A, um, okay. Now speaking of finals, yeah. we we went deep into the NBA finals. How does that compare to you to what we saw in the NHL finals? We saw Game Seven for the first time since 2011. What do uh, you think there? It was they won four one. The Blues ended up winning, and I know it's uh, game sevens though in uh, hockey are a little different because the crowd yes is in it, but the home the home ice advantage is really nothing. I don't think I don't yeah. think it really has anything to do with it. Um, it's crazy though. I think it was four shots on goal for the Blues and two goals in the first period, and the Bruins were just throwing shots at them. And um, what is it? The goalie for the uh, Blues, Bennett. Yeah, I, I can't think remember so. his last name. Um, he's a rookie. Um, also, he came up during the year. I mean, yeah. he was coming up when they were the, the Blues were the worst team uh, in January. So it's kind of the same story. It's two teams. Like I'm not saying the Raptors weren't going to. They weren't uh, projected to maybe be in the finals, but they definitely were not projected to win the finals, especially at a point in this playoff. They mm-hmm. were struggling. Like you they, said, lost they lost the first, first, first game to the Magic. Magic. They struggled throughout it, um, and they came back, and they persevered, and they really came to play when it mattered. Exactly. And the Blues, worst team in January, uh, they they didn't just make it to the playoffs, but they weren't the best team going in the playoffs and uh, took advantage of some of the, the better teams not playing very well, and they made it there, and they beat a very good Bruins team. Yeah. They, um, now, like you said, I mean, the, you you saw the quick turnaround for the Blues, right? Their last place in January. Now, for the Blackhawks going forward, third overall pick here in the, the upcoming draft. They make a trade last night. They pick up Penn's defenseman, uh, Oli Mata. Um, um, also, our guy Nick had a little bit of a uh, reaction video. Nick Petro, yep. our leader. Our fearless, fearless leader. So they're going um, out. They're picking up some guys. They're going to get, obviously, a high draft pick. Do we first see a a change in fortune for the Blackhawks in the upcoming season? Because we see how fast the NHL can turn around. Well, like with Nick, he he said that yes, you like the signing, it's all right, but he's not that great of a defenseman. Yeah. You want to go out and get some better name guys. So if this is the only move they make with this this trade they made, and um, I don't really know, I can't really, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I know all the uh, NHL draft prospects. Um, so I think yeah, they. Get, I mean, either way, even if they don't make any moves, they still ended the season on a good note. Definitely didn't make the playoffs, but they had put themselves in a situation where it was hard to get there anyways and I think with the a full off season of this coach you know he's going to be around for a little bit now um Patrick Kane Jonathan Taze having two of the best years they've had in a long time uh, Patrick Kane kept it moving uh with USA they got to brink it uh, they still can be making some moves here in the off season so I think it's very exciting for the Blackhawks going into uh the next season would it be did they start uh, when do they start I think preseason starts in 
early October. I like that. Um, mock draft right now. Number three has the Blackhawks taking Alex Turcotti, a center on the um, U.S. 18 and under team, 5'11", 186-pound lefty. Um, he's actually from the Chicagoland area and is committed to the University of Wisconsin. Like that. So um, uh, just a little insight there. But I think the biggest thing for me is that you saw how quick the NHL can turn, even just from January to June. So that gives you a little hope. They go out and make a couple more moves. I don't think that Oli Mata is the last guy that we're going to see signed. Hopefully not. Exactly. But you go out and you make some moves and, and, and see what happens because at the end of the day, now they have, what, probably three quarters of a season under the new coach. They're going to come in and get some guys. Obviously, the, the third overall pick is not going to be a, an immediate impact. But you see the possibility of turning something around very quickly. Yeah, and the Blackhawks, they need defense. So the more guys you can add to that defense, the better. So um, keep getting defensemen. Bennington was the goal Bennington, for the that's Blues. Right. Also, did you see Brett Hall? Uh, very, very drunk yeah. at the – Yeah, oh, uh, shocker. Uh, Brett the, Hall was drunk. Very drunk at almost every game that I've seen him in video and at the the parade. It looked like they had a good time over there in St. Louis. Yeah, at all 500,000. I guess that yeah, not, I didn't see numbers on that, but yeah, five hundred thousand people. I think the smallest Blackhawks one was still over a million. Hmm. Uh, but going back to the NBA, they have the draft coming up here yep. Thursday. Um, this it's coming this Thursday, Thursday? yes, yeah, June twentieth. Oh, damn, it's June twentieth. So um, I don't know. Do you have a if you have a softball game that night? Maybe we could do a Facebook. Do we could do a Facebook live at least during. Um, the Bulls' seventh pick, yep. or maybe they'll be making some moves. Uh, maybe we'll do maybe do top ten, top fifteen picks uh, because uh, that it takes a little bit longer than you'd think. Uh, we we did that with the yeah. uh, the selection game or the selection or the NBA lottery, and that took a while too. So I think they're gonna yes. uh, really stretch that out. But so yes. right now the Bulls, they uh, some of the options I'm seeing uh, at least at six. I see DeAndre Hunter from Virginia. Seven to the Bulls is Jarrett Colvert, and uh, eight to the Hawks, Cam Reddish. I like all those options. I think my one and two with those three uh, anyway, I like Jared Culvert. I like Cam Reddish. DeAndre Hunter I'm not not big on, um, and I think my guy Colby White's going to be gone by then. So. Yes, and uh, the Pelicans making a move last night. Yes. Traded AD for Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, Josh Hart, and this year's fourth overall pick, and then two future first-round mm -hmm. picks. Um, so they will have the one and the four pick and uh, maybe making a move to go up a little bit more. Um, but that will be interesting to see. They got top four pick. They'll get the best player in the draft and then one of the top five. Well, so. they also – a lot of uh, things stirring on the internet is that New Orleans is going to look to move that number four pick because um, the, they would be able to pick up maybe like two late first-round picks or a first and a second to pick up more guys to kind of add to that roster. But as a uh, lifelong Lakers fan, I love the move bringing AD in. And the nice thing is is they still, because it was a trade, because he only has one one year left on his deal they have room to go out and get another free agent um, I've seen different names uh, one of the big ones I saw JJ Redick and let's get into some free agency talk because there's still we, we discussed how Kevin Durant and and Clay Thompson are probably not going anywhere now that they're hurt no but there's a lot of names out there uh, that that could be potential big especially when we talk about for the Bulls Terry Rozier was one guy I yep. was looking at that I would like for the Bulls to scoop up um, he's a backup in uh, Boston, but I think maybe he could lead the way here. Um, he's the scrappy player that we need. Um, anyone else that you think that the Bulls could be after? So some of the names that I'm seeing, um, one of the biggest ones to me is D'Angelo Russell. Uh, could be a good landing spot. Had a breakout year, averaged twenty four and seven. You see him going seven. back to Los Angeles? No, Lakers. I don't. I think that bridge has been burned. Um, I just don't see that happening. Some other names uh, that are popping up as so what far bridge, as were they not, were they not like each other. I just I, I feel like a lot of times if you get traded from somewhere, the odds of you returning as a free agent, you just eh, you don't you see it. You never know though because they need a point. They would like to have another dominant point guard, and they'd be going into a great situation. So I don't know why you wouldn't want to look at that though. Yeah, I don't necessarily – I just don't see that being a fit right now. So one of the other names that's coming up, Malcolm Brogdon, who I would love to see in a Bulls uniform. I'm a big Brogdon guy, average 15, 5, and 3. Danny Green has also been rumored to be interested in the Bulls. That one would have to be the right contract. He's 31 years old, average 10, 4, and 2. Yeah, um, but he's a, he's a great shooter. He could uh, help some of the guys the on the team. Experience. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's been the – he has the most – 
well, I don't think he has the most, but he he did have the most three points, three points made in a finals. He's been in the finals what now four or five, three or four times now. Yep. And uh, I think his experience would be good. I think he's a great shooter. He would open up the court for a lot of guys because they would have to worry a little bit more about the three-point shot. Definitely. Um, and he would help maybe some of the younger guys. I think that would be a great signing. But uh, the Bulls, what? who knows yeah. what they're freaking Another do. name, and I don't know where you feel about this one, Ricky Rubio is rumored to have some interest in Chicago. 28 like- years old, had a good year in Utah. I like what how you, you just keep naming the point guards because that's what we need. Exactly. I, we well, need I'm going off of the, this website that has – the players and then the teams that are rumored to have interest. I know, but that's what I mean. The Bulls yes. need to go after point guards. They don't need big men. They got plenty of big men. Another one, Pat Beverly, Chicago kid, went to Marshall. Who's the, um, They just hired a coach uh, that is from Chicago, back to Chicago, and I remember Patrick Beverly tweeted something about it, so that would be nice to bring him back to Chicago. Definitely. I don't I don't hate that one at all. Um, obviously, you're going to see some rumors about D. Rose coming back. I don't For think... D. Rose's sake, I don't think he should be back here. I, I think agree. he needs to go to a contender, maybe go out to Los Angeles, play with the Lakers, try and win a championship, um, go over to the Warriors, go win a championship, get a playoff run. The Bulls are not in a situation for a guy like Derrick Rose to come on the team and uh, try and win a champion. I think that Derrick Rose needs to go be with a contender, and the Bulls aren't far, far from it, but they are it's a distance away from being contenders in this league. Definitely. And, and I think that, um, you know, you kind of nailed it on the head. Go get a point guard. Get someone that's going to, you know, give you better minutes than than Chris Dunn and can f- facilitate the game to guys like Lowry and the, to guys like Zach Levine. Um, and I actually was having this talk with my boss the other day. Do you feel that Zach Levine is going to be a part of the core when the Bulls are ready to compete in the Eastern Conference? Conference. I think that he will be, um, unless they get rid of him, they trade him. But yeah. I don't think – I think that he could fit into this going forward. Um, I I, get, I know he needs to work a little bit on his shot, um, but he, he has that – the pressure to the basket. You always have to worry about a big-time dunk from him. Um, he has good ball handling skills, I would say. Um, yeah, but above average. But his, his shooting needs to get worked on a little bit. Um, but, yeah, I would think that he could be a piece for this team going forward. Now, I know this is a stretch, and this is the last free agent I'm going to give you. Do you think the Bulls try and make a push to get Kemba Walker? Um, I, I already love. think that he's in a Lakers uniform. I think that is their main really? concern. I think that he would be a great fit. I think that the Lakers would love to have him on there. I think that they, he might be their uh, top off-season prospect. I also heard uh, this morning that it is now rumored that Kyrie has been saying to his team for months that he really wants to play with Anthony Davis. We'll see how that, that could be get interesting. Yeah, because he goes back to Los Angeles, you kind of look dumb in a way because you you kind of left LeBron in a situation where you got you you said to him what you turned out to be in Boston. You yeah. said that you you gave up kind of or whatever. And then he did the same thing to his teammates in Boston. And yeah. then it didn't really make sense. I think that would be a weird situation to go back to. But the NBA is a weird yeah, spot now. I agree. Um, guys that are friends, you don't know. Uh, maybe they're friends. You don't. I, I didn't know that Russell Westbrook was friends with uh, LeBron and then uh, Chris Paul. Westbrook. And then they were all together at a game. It's just all these guys are friends now. So you just don't know what yeah. they're talking about on the side. Um, because if you're gonna say that you want to play with AD, you knew that AD was gonna land in Los Angeles, so that's just saying you want to play for the Lakers. Well, so he just, he has said in the past. I mean, that he kind of not regretted, but what he said and did about not or t- being on his own leader, being you know the guy that he was kind of wrong about that. So maybe it's a maturing thing that he realizes he was wrong and that he doesn't mind playing second fiddle because of how hard it was in Boston. But we'll see, man. This is. Honestly, I love NBA playoff basketball. I almost like the free agency offseason period Because they more. do it right. They do it right. It's like exactly. the NFL. They do it right, unlike the MLB. Um, they It all goes down within about a week or two of each yep. other, uh, and it's a very fun two weeks, and I think that will be exciting. Hopefully the Bulls make some moves for us so we can be happy. And like I said, we'll be going Facebook Live, I guess, now. I think that would be a cool situation, at least during the first 10 picks or so. Mm-hmm. Um, get our reaction to what the Bulls do. Maybe they'll piss us off. Maybe they won't. Really and truthfully, um, it, unless they do something crazy, they really can't piss us off because no. you don't know enough about these guys yet. Um, but well, speaking they, of they weird and, and how bad the MLB free agency, let's get into some MLB stuff. Man, the first place Cubs have a terrible week. They're back tied for first place in a great 
Uh, I wouldn't say a great game, but you Darvish pitched really well. Seven innings, two hits, one earned run, one walk, 10K. Yeah. A last 11 games. And he gets a no decision again, nine in a row. His last 11 games uh, have been really, really good, I mm-hmm. think. Um, his overall is two and three. 4.65 ERA. That has just been dropping. 91 since. Ks, but the big thing is he has 41 walks already this season. Yeah. Um, he hasn't a been lot bad of those as were of early. Lit, early. Yep. So that's what I'm saying. He he over the, all the last few games. I think the last 10 games, other than Kyle Hendricks, I would say he you Darvish has been the most consistent yes. pitcher in the starting rotation. A year ago, we never thought we'd Not say that Lester sentence. Not saying Lester and Hamels haven't had a better, better season overall, but they haven't been as consistent. And last 10 games or so with you Darvish, he has showed that he has been consistent. He can go. He's been going into the later innings. Um, he gave a great performance last night going up until – um, the seventh inning, he went. He pitched through the seventh inning. Um, that's what he's been kind of his his uh, red flag at the beginning of the year. He hadn't been going later into the games. Mm-hmm. And then the Cubs, Anthony Rizzo, two run homer in the ninth inning um, to give them the win off of Kenley Jansen. Off of Kenley, that Kenley was Jansen the coolest with a part. quick. He hit Chris Bryant right away, which is already a weird thing for uh, Kenley Jansen. Yeah. Usually a perfect in the games. Um, I mean, those. Is gas. he the best closer in the game? I would say he's got to be the best closer. I mean, Rollis Chapman's always got to be up there, but he's been struggling. Yeah. Um, but the Yankees are good. Uh, Kenley James. Hopefully, stuff cr- is hopefully we have the best closer in the game now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a very cool situation. The Cubs needed that win last night. Like I said, overall, you don't need the win, but you don't need to. You don't want to go into today having to worry about a sweep. Uh, we got a Sunday night baseball. Maybe we can we could split it. Kyle Hendricks going down. Uh, Ten day IL. Uh, shoulder tightness. I think he's got inflammation yep. in his right shoulder. Uh, I'm sorry if I say this name wrong. Adbert Alzola um, is the yeah. guy that they're maybe is their top pitching prospect that may come up. I think they want to give him about one or two starts just to um, – Theo said to ease his way into uh, major league experience. Uh, so he will be filling in, I think, instead of Tyler Chatwood or Mike Montgomery. They're gonna, he's their top prospect. He's been pitching really well. Uh, it would be nice to – it would be kind of a cool situation in the middle of the season. Um, y- yes, you don't want to just throw anyone out there, but it is a good time to uh, give this guy a chance, see what he can Definitely. do. Maybe he can uh, – he gets a few starts, does pretty well. Uh, maybe they'll send him back down when, when Hendricks comes back, and then maybe he could be going forward a piece for this Cubs because, like you said, we got Cole Hamels and we got John Lester who aren't going to play baseball forever. So yeah. we got to get in a situation. It'd be nice to bring up a guy and you don't have to go sign somebody. Um, and that's usually not what the Cubs have been doing with their pitching prospects, mm-hmm. but it'd be nice. Yeah, I mean, Albert Az- Alzole, um, you know, having a great year in the minors right now, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let's see, Triple A, yep, 309 ERA. He's 2-1, and one, uh, started six games. He's pitching well, he ate up 32 innings, started the year at Myrtle Beach. Um so, yeah, I mean, if that's the the move, like, let's give this kid a shot. He's pitched really well. He had, I want to say, like, three of his last starts. He didn't give up any runs or yeah. one run or something like that. So, why not, man? Let's give the kid a shot and see where he fits in. And if it's in the bullpen, so be it. If not, then, uh, you know, we'll keep cooking him up in the minors. And- he may get a start against the White Sox. I'm not sure how that's going to line up. I knew it was supposed to be maybe Giolito versus Hendricks on Wednesday. Um, so I don't know how that's going to play out, but we got Cubs Sox here Tuesday, Wednesday. That'll be exciting. Yeah. And speaking of the White Sox, uh, before yesterday, we're back to 500. They were 34 and 34 going into their game against the Yankees. They lose to the Yankees last night, but it's the latest in a season that the White Sox have remained at or above 500 since 34 and 35. Now yeah, they are one game below. Yep. Um, they're playing good baseball though. I mean, yeah. it's it's exciting baseball. They got fans showing up there to. Uh, G-rate spot, and um, it's exciting baseball. And like I said, it's exciting that we're going into a little bit of a crosstown classic here with exciting baseball yeah. from both teams. And let's be honest, I mean, even as a Cubs fan, the White Sox should have four guys in the All-Star game. Yeah. Um, you know, Lucas Giolito, in my opinion, is the best pitcher Eloy, in the American League. you think league. he'll make it? No, I don't. I think with his injuries and, you know, the Who time he spent. Three, um, I'm going to say Yoan Mankata. I'm going to say James McCann and Tim Anderson all deserve to be all stars this year. That's we'll but see we'll if they see. all make it. I know I, I would say Tim Anderson for sure will be in. McCann maybe just because of the catcher position. Yep. Um, but Yoan maybe a little bit harder. But uh, those guys you said all probably deserve it. Um, 
playing good baseball is just it's exciting because, like I said, remember back in 2015 when I'm not saying it's going to be the exact same situation, but you get to have some fun with it. The young guys are coming up. Dylan Cease will be up in the next month or so. Uh, these And the young guys are playing. Eloy is out there hitting two homers, <laughs> having some fun with the media. It's just exciting for uh, White Sox fans that have been going through – I mean, hell for the last six years or so. They haven't they haven't finished 500 or above in the last six years. Uh, it seemed like nothing was really going to go in their way. Yep. Uh, and then they got Eloy. Also, the Eloy trade, we went into this on our Facebook Live last night. Uh, it, neither team lost that trade. No, both, both teams, teams won. won. The Cubs got what they wanted. Yes, they wanted to keep Eloy. Yes, you want to keep your best prospect. But you knew what you, you wanted spend to spend money to make. Money. You wanted to get Quintana, and Quintana's been what you want him to be. Uh, he has been the greatest pitcher, but he's been a consistent yes. pitcher. Um, and you, the contract works out for guys that you want to sign. And Eloy's been great for the for the White Sox, and yep. maybe we'll see what Dylan Cease can do. Well, hey guys, if you want to go to the Crosstown Classic this week, make sure you head on over to our friends at Sea Geek. Either check out their website, download the app. Either way, you can't go wrong. I actually just used Sea Geek last week. Took my wife to the Machine Gun Kelly show at the Aragon Ballroom on the North Side. Absolutely perfect. Tickets were great. Super easy. Scan it off your phone. You can't go wrong with SeatGeek, and I checked like four other websites. They were, without a doubt, the cheapest. So, like I said, SeatGeek is a ticket search engine that never loses the sight of the fan experience. Simply go to their website or download their app, type in the name of a team or even a concert, whatever you want to go to, choose the date that you're looking to attend. SeatGeek will present you with a graphic chart of the stadium where you can then choose your seats and tickets based on a score system that determines the best value. You want to look for green, folks. Always look for the green. Those are the best value. If you've never used SeatGeek before, for. We've partnered with them to give you guys a great deal. Just apply the coupon code The Loop Sports. That's The Loop Sports in all capital letters at checkout and take $20 off your first purchase. Now, if you've used SeatGeek before, we're sorry, but this is just a coupon code for your first time. Maybe we need to talk to them and see if we can get a return customer coupon. But that means a $50 night for two at the ballpark becomes $30 or a $23 trip by yourself turns into just $3 with our coupon code The Loop Sports in all capital letters. You've now got no excuse to not go out and root on your favorite team just apply the coupon code the loop sports at checkout and have a great time on us shout out and thank you to sea geek for partnering with us here at the loop sports and typical chicago fans yes go out go get some tickets for tuesday wednesday at wrigley field white Sox, uh cubbies will be going at you i think they play again in july yeah um but this yeah it's kind of a weird tuesday wednesday uh series uh lucas giolito is scheduled to pitch wednesday on fire as of late. Ten and one this year, two point two two ERA, ninety five strikeouts. The man's making five hundred and seventy three thousand dollars <laughs> right be now. The best pitcher in the American League. But you really go into the year, you didn't know that. Yeah, exactly. But he has been uh he has changed up whatever. He has become, I think, the best pitcher in the league right at this moment. He's gonna start for the AL. Um, I think that going forward he could be the ace for this team. Yeah, I know absolutely. you got Kopech coming up, you got you got Kopech coming back. You got Rondon coming back. Maybe you want to go out and get somebody, Rodon. but you could. Did I say Rondon? Rondon. Oh, Rondon. He uh, used to pitch for the Cubs. Yeah, where does he pitch now? He pitches for the Astros. I thought I saw that. He, yep. Did he do the hat no. side too? Um, but I lost my train of thought there. Sorry, that was my fault. Um, Frick, now I lost no, my. No, he's, he's going to be the ace. I oh, mean, yeah. The way he's go. pitching right now. But you can now, build around him in the rotation. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's what I was trying to go at. Um, so it's a guy that the White Sox should be. Like you should be ecstatic about because this can start building your pitching, and that's what you've been kind of hoping to get in uh, in the works because your offense model. your offense has been there all season, and your offense is gonna be there. You got great, you got a pretty freaking good offense um, that can Definitely. get you some runs in the later innings. Um, it's ex- it's an exciting offense, and but this pitching rotation as of right now is pretty trash. I mean, Ivan Nova stinks. Yeah. Um, the other guys are just trying to eat up innings, and Lucas Giolito is going out there and becoming he's the best pitcher on this team easily, and he's becoming the best pitcher in the league, all because he just he worked through all the sh- the shit in the league. I mean, he yeah. went down to the minors for a little bit, but he got he was I mean, he got traded for Adam Eaton, and and him and somebody else got traded for Adam Eaton. And uh, that had to be a little demoralizing. And then you come here and you kind of struggle and people are trying to write you off. And then you, you can change it all. Uh, you're only 24 years old. Yeah. I mean, and you, you said it, though. Reynaldo Lopez, Ivan Nova, Manu, Buen, Banuelos, 
all have over a six ERA. And they're still almost, there's only a one game under. I mean, but we said this last night. Lucas Giolito has ten of their thirty four wins yeah. this year. So twenty four of their wins, only twenty four of their wins are without Lucas yeah, Giolito. That's, so that's kind of, of wild. Um, but it's exciting for the White Sox, and it's fun to watch um, some uh, good baseball on the South Side. Not like I really care that much. Um, but it is nice because it's nice to have a little good baseball in the, the city of yeah, Chicago. Absolutely. Two good teams uh, going at it. Let's go into we have TCF. Typical uh, Chicago trivia. Draft edition. Draft NBA edition. draft edition, yep. I should say. Um, because, yes, we said we got the draft here Thursday night, June 20th. Uh, we'll be going to Facebook Live to see if we're going to be happy or mad. I think we're going to be pretty indecisive yeah. about it. But it, it'll be a little some content, I guess. But – who wants to go? You want to go first here? I'll go first. First one should be an easy one. Um, on draft night in 2006, who did the Bulls acquire for LaMarcus Aldridge, who they had drafted? 2006. They traded LaMarcus Aldridge to somebody, to the Trailblazers, for who? 2000- People forget that LaMarcus Aldridge was once a Bull. Still pisses me off to this day. Let's see. Who would they have got? I don't know if you're going to get this. I don't think I am either. Uh, 2006. Wow, that was a long time ago. You really think that was a long time. 13 years ago. I don't even know if I can name it. I was just, whatever. What is it? Tyrus Thomas. Tyrus? Yeah, I was not going to get that at all. The Bulls thought Tyrus Thomas and Lamarcus was better than Lamarcus Aldridge. No, I... Tyrus Thomas. Yeah, that was. I believe that deal was straight up. Jeez, Louise! Yeah. That just shows the tumble. Tyrus Thomas out of LSU, who had made a Final Four run that year. Lamarcus Aldridge out of Texas. <laughs> they thought they were pretty even. I think there were some cash considerations, but yeah. Okay, well, that was still a tough one. We're gonna throw this one. I hit you. What year and what pick was Stacy King picked by the Holy Chicago Bulls? Shit. 1988. First round, eighth Wrong. pick. Wrong. 89, oh, sixth pick. I was close. You're close. I was you're, you're close. close. You were close. But, uh, that's, a, that's a good one. That was a good Because I, I can't believe he was a sixth pick overall. Yeah, that is kind of wild. wild. And now he's big fat guy. Yeah. Um, since 1999, the Bulls have drafted three players from Duke University. Name two of them. Did they? Duke University. I'm trying to think of one. You get <laughs> Both of two of them were first round, first overall. I believe ninety nine, oh two, and then oh four. Maybe. Was Elton Brand from Elton Duke? Brand's one of them? <sighs> the Luol Dang? That yeah, that so it's actually four. I forgot uh, Lou Aldang, but because I think he was a first. Did they round. draft Lou Aldang? They did. Okay, so yeah. so the other ones would have been Chris Duhan and Jay Will, huh? Jay Williams. So yeah, it was actually four players have been drafted out of Duke. I forgot about Lou Aldang. Well, this question is going to be kind of maybe fight your spot. Who are the only? There only been two Bulls picked number one overall. Derrick Rose. And Elton Brand. Yeah, so that's okay. so you kind of ruined my So, yeah, Jay there. Williams must have been like two or three. Yeah, so now we're both one for one. Yep. All right, last. A one and one, one for one. One and one. Yeah. Which major key in the second Bulls three-peat was drafted in the second round of 1990? Say it again. Which major key of the second three-peat of the 90s Bulls was drafted in the second round in 1990? The year I was born. Was it Rodman? That's a good guess, but no. It was from Split, Croatia. Does that oh, help? It's Tony Kukoc. Kukoc. Oh, Tony Kukoc. That's it. No, because remember, Rodman played for the Pistons. I couldn't remember when he got drafted. When did he get drafted? 80-something? 80 80-something. 80 I don't even know if he got drafted. He might have been a free agent. Dang it. I should, dang. That's a, that was a tough one. Okay. Um, what team did the Bulls get Scottie Pippen's draft rights from? In 1987. What Supersonic. Te- Supersonic, yes. I, Victory. Won. That's a good one, though. That is a good one, because I almost said Trailblazers. We'll see if you knew this one. What pick was Jimmy Butler in 2011? 30. 30. Do you know who they drafted before him? Who? 
I was hoping you didn't know because it was some bum. Oh, like, oh. hang on. Now I got to look it up. The um, Bulls draft, they had two picks in the first round. Yeah, they they took someone at uh, at like 26, and then they took Jimmy Butler. Um, hang on, I got it right here. Oh, no, it wasn't a bum. I'm sorry. Norris Cole. They took it 28. Remember Norris Cole? Yeah, I wouldn't say he's – I mean, he's good. He won an NBA championship. Yeah, he was Yeah, he was lucky not to be on the Miami Heat. Yeah, That's exactly. Also, yeah, but they traded him on draft night. Jeremy Lin just won an NBA championship, that's too. That's a valid go. point. Uh, so, yeah, that's that. Uh, but, yeah, I guess you won. Yeah, that's stink. Finally. Uh, that was TCF, uh, Chicago Sports Trivia NBA Draft Edition. That will be on Thursday night. Go out and see oh, what the Bulls <laughs> – I just hit my leg. Uh, what the Bulls pick uh, at pick 11. It's going to be exciting. 11, seven. seven. <laughs> Uh, I don't even know why. I, I don't even know where I got 11 from there. I just – I hit my leg and then I, my brain broke. <laughs> yeah. Um, Must have hit a nerve. Yeah. But thank you for watching episode or listening to episode 39 of Typical Chicago Fans presented by The Loop Sports. Thank you to our sponsors, SeatGeek. Type in the promo code The Loop Sports in all caps. You get $20 off your first purchase of over $30. Shout out to 26shirts.com Chicago. Go out and get the Red Hot Biscuit shirt. Um, and they also got mystery shirts. They got uh, the, they got some flags on there. Flags are cool. I might be ordering some of those. Shout out to 26shirts.com Chicago. And also shout out Monkey Knife Fight. Yes. Type in the promo code LOOP. They match your deposit up to $100 for your daily fantasy lovers. Um, you could, you'll you like that. Uh, NBA is over with, but you still got baseball. So if you want to get into that. I don't know. Maybe they do. I thought I had seen some WNBA stuff on there. Um, so if you want to get into that, if you're tired of – the regular lines and over unders go out there play a little bit of fan. Uh, it's over unders usually gave you two pitchers two catch two hitters for baseball. Um, it's just a little bit of an easier, I think, better way of betting because it's fun. It's a new way of watching the game. That's on Monkey Knife Fight promo code Loop. Hundred dollars matches your uh, matches your deposit up to a hundred dollars. Uh, I am Zach Lilia, and as if you're watching on our YouTube page above me. We've been having it the whole show. At Z Lilia, L-I-L-J-A-T-C-F on Twitter. The main page, at Typical underscore Chicago. Um, uh, the Loop Sports. At, I just had my leg again. Stop doing at that. At The Loop uh, underscore sport. Facebook, we do a Facebook Live show, which we will be keeping to a weekday show now. We tried a few weekend shows. We're back to weekdays between Tuesday and Thursday, 8 o'clock, Facebook Live. Go check us out on there. The Loop Sports is usually sharing it for us. We have our blogs on there that have all of our podcast links on there. If you want to check that out, also on their Twitter, too. They uh, will we'll retweet those. I have all the links, Spotify, iTunes, and Spreaker. Uh, also, Instagram. We're going to be doing something cool next yeah. week. Uh, we, we always Watch do a Zach pre- get his ass kicked in ping pong. We do a pre-podcast ping pong, and we put it on our Instagram. So if you don't have Instagram, you don't know about it. We're going to do an Instagram live uh maybe we'll or maybe we'll do a facebook live we'll see maybe what we can do two. um and we'll be doing that live uh during our little bit of a uh, ping pong i'll be going for or back to 500 hopefully uh i had a nice <laughs> little victory happen. this week but yeah that'll be some exciting that we're doing next week before the podcast we'll let you know when that will be uh, and also the Loop Sports on Instagram. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at BoomingTCF. Uh, if you want, to, if you're an Apple user, you can find us on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe, rate, review. If not, find us on Spotify and follow us there. Head on over to the YouTube page. Type in "Typical Chicago Fans" and smash that red subscribe button. Uh, we'll have a ton of new content coming for you guys this summer. So stay tuned. Yeah, we are going to be doing some cool stuff with uh, YouTube. Uh, I'll be getting some more videos uploaded. Maybe I'll try and find someone that has a little bit more Wi-Fi. We're out in the boondocks. Maybe, maybe we go to, like, Starbucks or McDonald's or something. Yeah, we'll see theirs. what we can do. But, we're, yeah, we're going to be doing some cool stuff. Uh, let us know. Like I said, next week will be our first episode with no NBA, no NHL. So throw at us some ideas. We'll yes. be talking about the draft. But if you got some segment ideas, if you got some questions for us, maybe we'll be doing a question segment. Uh, we'll be taking some of your questions from even our Facebook Live and keeping them until the podcast because we're going to need a lot of uh, yes. content fillers over the next few weeks here. Uh, we'll also be starting up, hopefully, our uh, local legends. We'll be yep. getting that out soon. Um, so, like I said, summer is here now, especially for Boomy and me. Yeah. I'll be getting off a little bit earlier, too. Um, so, we'll be uh, pushing out some more content, having some more time for the content. But, again, thank you for listening and watching us. If you, like I said, watching us here on our YouTube page, go out and subscribe to our YouTube page. Uh, we love you all. Peace.